So in lecture 12 of the class, we are going to look at our uh, cost function optimization, but specifically focus on MATLAB examples. In this screencast, we're going to look at the first example of this, example 12.1, where we're going to use F0 to find the maximum of a profit function in conjunction with F solve. So this particular screencast, an example, is jumping off of a previous example, example 11.2, when we used F solve with, from within a for loop to find the profits function as a function of xc. And then since we varied xc from one purity 0.8 to another purity 0.99, we saw how the profit function changed. Um, and then we plotted it. And based on that plot, what we did is we determined where the maximum and what the maximum was in our profits function. If you recall, that maximum was right about here at close to 90% purity and 70% profits. So remember what's going on here is that we have a condenser which is con partially condensing out our um, desired product C but also our undesired um, byproduct D and this liquid stream here is going to be our product stream and we want to keep a high purity of this but in addition to that a high flow rate N dot L. And this of course was coming from a reaction where A plus B goes to C but then also a side reaction A plus C goes to D. Okay, so the way the previous example worked was as follows. So we wanted to start out by varying xc. So we varied xc. And every time we had a value of xc, we sent that to fsolve. And fsolve called upon a function that we wrote, some f of y. which then returned its value to f solve, and f solve varied uh, the values of y to find where f was. So what f solve spit out in the end was y star the root of f. Excuse me. And once we found the root of f, we could use that to find out what our profit was for that particular value of xc. And then we could plot phi as a function of xc versus xc, which we see here in this plot here. And that's what we found. We found there was some maximum there, which was good. OK, so that's the way it worked. But how are we going to use f0 to find the maximum profits when we're already using f solve? So if you look back at example 11.3 where we used F0, we were able to find the value of a particular molar flow rate n dot a feed where the profit function's derivative became zero. So here's the profit function as we had found there and the derivative of the profit function being here. And so we could use F0 on this to determine what value of n dot a f did the derivative become zero and then we assumed that was our maximum. And of course we confirmed that by plotting it. Now, in that case, we had a profit uh, function, which was an analytical expression of n dot af, so we could take the derivative by hand. So we get this function here, this profit margin, um, analytically as um, n dot af, as a function of n dot af, so we could write a MATLAB function and use f0 to solve it. So in that case, the solution strategy looked like the following. So we started out with an initial guess for n dot a phi, comma zero. Now it could have been 40. Um, but we started out with 50 moles per second instead. Okay, so that initial guess went to F0, and F0 called upon the function that we wrote for the derivative of our profits function, or our profits margin. Which then interacted back with F0, and F0 finally gave us what our n dot a feed star was, or that being the root of phi prime. Okay, and so that was pretty simple. We had this one single function, and F0 just varied this value to find where this would be equal to zero, and then it spit out that value of n dot a phi. So in contrast, here, uh, because we have to have F solve, our solution strategy would look more like the following. So you have an initial guess for xc, which is then going to feed into F0. Now F0 will then call upon some function that we need to write, which will be the derivative of our profit function as a function of xc. 
and that function will then go uh, send back to f0 the value of our derivative, which will then hopefully spit out our xc star, or the value of xc that maximizes, or the maximizer of our profits. Pardon my terrible handwriting, that's supposed to be maximizer of our profits. Okay. Now the problem with this is that within this function, we can't just get it straight away because we have to call f solve because it depends upon this nonlinear system of equations. So the way that's going to work inside of that is that within this function, it's going to have to call on f solve. And then f solve will then have to go in, go ahead and call on another function, which we've already written from example 11.2 f of y, and remember y in this case is like temperature, uh, molar flow rates, um, molar fractions, and other process variables, which will then give it back the, to f solve the value of, of capital F, and f solve is going to go ahead and vary all of these y's until capital F becomes uh, zero, right? And so what f solve will spit out is this value of y star, the value of all these process variables that makes this capital F equals zero. So this y star will correspond to the xc, which is right here, which was given to f solve, and it's the y star that corresponds to this value of xc. Okay, then the y star will then go back and feed back into this function, which will finally allow us to calculate what our profits margin will be as a function of xc. So all this really flow of information is fairly fairly complicated. Okay, now Note also here what we're going to have to do, and this part right here, is that that function there has to calculate phi prime numerically because we don't have an analytical expression for phi prime. So this is a complicated flow of information, but if, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and box off of this right here. And if I put a box around all of these different um, bo other boxes and arrows, what we see is that there is this um, section right here, which then corresponds, if I scroll up, to the single box, which is here in what our solution strategy was for our previous example, where we used F0. Okay, so how do we make this work? We have to note that MATLAB just does not care what goes in this dotted box that I drew. It doesn't care what goes in there. So in order to F0, all it cares about is that there is a box, that is some function, which takes in it a scalar, xc, right here. This goes through F0 and is fed to this box, and then spits out some scalar here, which in our case is phi prime, or f. So even if inside this um, box or function that F0 calls upon, there's a set of nonlinear equations that F solve must call upon, it doesn't matter. All MATLAB cares about is that you have this one scalar input and this other scalar out output, and then it can find the value of the scalar input, which makes the scalar output equal to zero. So how does that look? So here's what this outer function looks like, where you have um, our value of F, this is our profit margin, as uh, a function of xc, which is our first input. It has to be this first input, and then a whole bunch of other parameters, right? And so this is how f0 works. Remember, this is here is the output that is going to be 0, or the f0 is trying to find um, equal to 0. Here is our first input, right? So this is the input that f0 will vary. Now note also here we have the second output to this function, which we didn't ever have before, this extra output. It does not hurt F0. Now what you're going to find in here is that inside this um, outer function, you have something which looks like what we had in our previous scripts when we called F0, or, or F solve. So what we're having, the first thing that we're doing is that we're getting another function handle, which is some inner function that this function then will call upon through F solve. And then we're going to use f solve to solve 
um, for the values of y that correspond to the xc that came in and these other parameters as well. So um, into the input for the outer function you have the initial guesses which you're going to send on to f solve and get your actual output y which is all the value of all the process variables that are that satisfy you know the material balances and routes law equations when you have a particular given value of xc and of course all the other parameters. Now once you have these uh, process values y as before what we can do is we can calculate the energy balance to get the required q dot for that scenario and then calculate our profit function phi. Once we do that we can just repeat the entire scenario here that is outlined in these lines of code except for which is just a copy paste except for this time we're going to have a value of xc plus delta or some delt um, and do all of that so then finally we get another value of phi, phi1 which then we can help calculate our derivative f. Okay, one, okay so that's, that's complicated but basically inside this outer function we're going to also use f solve to call another function which solves our process variables and this outer function will then spit out some value of f which is our profit margin which is the thing that f0 is going to try to make equal to zero by varying xc our first input. Right, and so that's what's going on here and the script for this looks like this and so we have is our initial guess for xc we have our handle function handle for this outer function and f0 calls upon that outer function with the initial guess xc0 and then all these other extra parameters and don't forget your options is in this placeholder here with the empty brackets because we don't have any options in this particular example. Then we have another call to this uh, to the outer function here which um, will give us our value of phi very easily. We don't have to um, type out more code for that. Uh, this, this outer function is already programmed to do that, right? And so what's going to happen here is that uh, when we run this code in MATLAB, it's going to give us some value of xc, xc start equals 0 0.903, and our profit at that location is going to be about $70 per second. Now, the way this is going to look in MATLAB is that our outer function here um, it looks just like I showed you in the other code here. I have a whole, uh, in, in the lecture part here, I have a whole bunch of comments to help me remember what things are. I define my delta up front. I have my f handle and calling on f0 to solve for all these process variables that I don't know, right? Unpacking the process variables, um, solving for my other mole fractions that I didn't solve for before, my thermodynamic constraints, calculating all the um, h hats, and then my q dot in for my energy balance which will help me then evaluate my profit function phi. Okay, good. So that's what all everything that we've done before in a previous example. Now, in addition to that, we're going to repeat everything just to get the derivative. So um, it's just a copy paste except for this line of code here. Everything gets pasted down the exact same way before, except for now, my profit function, I'm going to call phi one. And then I calculate the derivative here. So after all of this, this entire function is giving me what my profit margin is f. Um, just to scroll through really quick, oops, here we go, this is the wrong name. Here's what our inner function looks like. It's exactly the same thing as example 11.2 um, function. Right, so this is what's, um, what we're doing to solve for all of our process variables. And when I call on these things in the script, of course here's our, our um, comments to remember what they are. I have to define my constraints. Here's my initial guesses. Um, call upon this outer function, function handle with F0, and then F0 is going to spit out this XC, which makes our profit margin equal to zero. And then we're going to display. And so the way that all looks in MATLAB when I display everything is just like this. And that's my answer.